Good evening, everybody. How you guys doing? Why don't you guys join us? Welcome to Night of Worship. So glad you guys are with us.
But the mercy's why Cause you're good on your promise Come on, let me hear you I'll take you at your word If you said it, I believe it I've seen how good it works If you start it, you'll complete Come on, I'll take you at your word Yes, I will, yeah. Come on, church You spoke And the chaos fell in I see it in my life. Hey, it's a narrow road that leads to life, but I wanna be on it. Oh, it's a narrow road and the tide is high, but you're part of the waters. Here we go. I'll take you at your word. If you said it. Welcome to our fall night of worship. This is going to be a great night for us. This is actually the very first time that all three of our campuses have joined together. So we have Windmill, Midtown, Highland, and we are so excited about what God is doing. And it just seemed appropriate for us just to be able to come and just worship Jesus. Because we know that we live in a crazy world. We know that we live in crazy times. We know that your life is full of busyness and burdens. And for us to come here together 
and exalt Jesus, to magnify Jesus. And so as part of our For the City initiative that we are leaning into all week long, tonight we have three movements. We want to talk about your purpose, your people, and your place. How God has put you here for such a time as this. Let me read this scripture that comes out of Philippians chapter 1. The Apostle Paul writes this. He says, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted. He will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. And there's a, there's a song that is not new, but it's new to us. And we sang it this last weekend called Be Magnified, Christ Be Magnified in My Life, Be Exalted in My Life. And here's the thing about Jesus, that when we think about magnifying Jesus, he does not change. Our perspective changes. See, Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If I go outside and I try to see through all of the lights in our city to see the stars, they're pretty faint. But if I get a telescope, I can magnify them and I can see them up close. Well, that's what we want to do, is we want to magnify Jesus. We want to get close to him. So as we magnify him, that he will be magnified through us. And so it's just in that posture tonight that we want to come and we want to give this night to Jesus and to say, be magnified. So let's stand and let's sing this together.
look like for Christ to be magnified in you? What does it look like for God's character, his love, grace, forgiveness, compassion to shine through you? Who do you easily offer love, grace, forgiveness, and compassion to? From whom do you withhold empathy? Take the next few moments to invite God to show you where you need him to be magnified in you. You may have things that you need to repent for, things that distract or make you lose sight of God and his will for your life. Take a moment to confess those things to God and ask him to give you a fresh perspective, his perspective, so that Christ will be magnified in you without limitations. We all have things in us that can heal. Take a moment to surrender these things to God so that he may be glorified. As we turn away from our old way of living, let our desperation for God grow within us. Let us reflect together on the words of David. Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Psalm 63. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. my 
before it. The demons run it free. At the mention of the name King of Majesty, there is no power in hell, nor any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. your purpose for us. And we acknowledge that you're already at work in the world around us. Give us wisdom to see where you're leading. Lord, give us hearts that are in tune with your presence and sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Help us to still our minds and open our ears that we might hear your voice cutting through all the noise of life. Remove distractions from our minds, things that might hinder us from seeing you. And instead, would you fix our gaze on the places where you're actively moving and grant us the insight to recognize your work and the courage to join you in those places. And we thank you, Lord, that even when what we're dealing with in our lives doesn't feel or look good, that your plans are always good. And we trust that you have our lives in your hands and you have from the very beginning. Remind us that even though we can't see the plan, you know the plan. Would you give us faith and hope and strength as we follow you. Father, teach us to be patient and persistent in our seeking of you in moments of uncertainty. Would you give us the assurance that you are faithful? Help us trust in your plan, knowing that it's good for us and that it brings you glory. Guide us, Lord, to the right places and to the right people. Lead us to communities and opportunities where we can align ourselves with your will. And may we be examples of your love and your grace and your transformation in this world. We worship you for who you are. You are unchanging. You are the same yesterday, 
today and forever. Just as you led your people through the sea and into that promised land, we're now praying for you to lead and guide us. You are a faithful God. Let us be reminded of that truth with each day we live. Thank you for the unique way that you've shaped us in order to serve you and your kingdom. And we ask for you to reveal your purpose to us, that we would move toward you in action, not only words. Draw us close because we need you, God. Amen.
words that we are singing but if you believe it I want you to sing it with me question. I heard us clap. I heard us get really excited. But do you really believe? Okay, okay. All right. Now that sounds like you really believe. Well, listen to the words of Paul. Paul makes a beautiful statement here in 2 Corinthians. He says, 
You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. See, the world says preach about yourself. He says we preach that Jesus is Lord and we ourselves are servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let there be light in darkness, has made the light shine in our hearts. Everybody say our hearts. So that we know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. We know that we have his light shining in our hearts, but ourselves are like fragile clay jars. And that's the word that I want us to look at. We are all fragile clay jars. One version says earthen vessels. So that means there are sometimes we come to a space such as this and we can't do anything but come as empty vessels. Some of us may have come here and you're full. And you, you feel it. But the question I have for you, if you're a fool, whose life are you pouring back into? Because that same light that's in that same vessel that we know that that's the light of God, it wasn't meant just for you. It was meant to share with others. And so today, if you've come empty, there's two words I want you to think about. Restored and replenished. Restored and replenished. What we know is that materialism can't restore and it can't replenish. We know that social media can't restore and it can't replenish. So as you're reflecting and being intentional about this time, don't take this time for granted. This is the time in which we surrender our spirit-filled vessels to the one and only true Savior. And so I'll leave you with this. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we're not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We may get knocked down, but we won't be destroyed. And so what I want you to do, I want you to put your hands together. I want you to take your hands together. And every thought that you know is being a distraction to you, I want you to bottle that up in that hand. And I want you to lift your hand up. Lift your hand up. What happens? we get to a posture of praise. And I want you to stay in that position tonight and be intentional about what God is going to do to you. Because Christ is our firm foundation and we know that he is in the, he's at the center of it all. May God bless you. Thank you. sing with me. When did I start to forget all of the great things you did? When did I throw away faith for the impossible? And how did I start to believe sufficient for me and why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles let's lift up this truth together you are more than able
faith in one place, God can do incredible things. So often we know He can do incredible, impossible things, but we limit Him. And like the song, we talk ourselves out of miracles. But our God, our God is more than able. When we look back over our lives, we see His fingerprints through it all. It causes our faith to grow, and faith is contagious. It spills out to all those around us, to our friends, our family, neighbors, and even the stranger at the store. Think of the people you interact with on a regular basis. Where do you find community? Where do you feel your light shines the brightest? Think of your close circle of friends. Who are your people? Say a prayer of thanks for your friends. But maybe you find yourself in a lonely place. Your heart is desperate to find community that welcomes you. Say a prayer asking God to fill that need in your life, to surround you with people who encourage, support, and want to do life with you. Think of your circle of influence, people at school, work, or family members? Who might you be convicted to share the love of God with? I don't know about you guys, but I find myself talking myself out of a lot of things. And uh, for one thing, as we're talking about people right now, I'm grateful for this team and the impact they've had on my life. But I want to let you know this next song, this next song is a song that we wrote together. This is a song that's taken, it's been a grind. It's been three years, three years of us working, tweaking. I don't know if you've created anything, but it's a lot to put something out there. So this song is birthed from a prayer that I had once that, and I still have this prayer. It's a prayer that I had, though, where I wanted to see the church follow where the Holy Spirit is moving, that we would go with him wherever he goes. This song is called move in this place. So as we catch on, please sing along. Our hearts 
revive our souls Alive again and fully known Let your fire burn Within our bones Lord, draw us close Here's the chorus Holy Spirit In this place Come Holy Spirit And have your way We lift up our hands We offer our praise So come Holy Spirit
12 years ago, Janelle and I knew we were about to enter a new chapter of our lives. We had a one-year-old daughter, and we felt God calling us to a change. 
and we leaned into that moment and we prayed and talked about it and we discovered one really important thing. We really love Nevada. And not a lot of people really love Nevada. And I get it. I totally get it. You have to learn to see the beauty in different shades of brown. The, the sound of slot machines kind of has to be the, the sound of home. Yeah, I love Nevada so much that, that when I leave the state and come back, I sing the state song to myself. Home means Nevada, home means the hill. That's it. Now, even, even if you don't love Nevada, you don't have to live here long before you start to appreciate some of the things. For instance, in just a couple of months, all across the country, people will be shoveling snow off their driveways and scraping ice off their windshields, and we will be bundling up in our 50-degree weather. Now... If, if you've ever been hungry after 9 p.m. in another city, you realize just how great it is to live in a 24-7 city. Now, La Las Vegans are kind of funny. Amongst ourselves, we will complain a lot. We will complain about traffic, about construction, the schools, the strip, the heat, but then you get us outside of the city, nobody can talk about trash about Las Vegas. We've got Las Vegas back. Now, we all take different paths to get to Las Vegas. A few of us were, were born here. Do we have any natives? Some of us end up here without a choice. Our parents or our military moved us here. Some of us were, were, were trying to escape, and, and we thought Vegas sounded like a good place to start over. Some of us chose here, or, or maybe we retired here. And some of us aren't sure and can't recall how we got here in the first place. But here's what I know. We are all here now. And God can and wants to use us in this place. We just started a, a new series called Among Lions uh, about the book of Daniel. And during that same time, there was a, a prophet named Jeremiah. While Daniel, his friends, and a bunch of other people were captured and forcibly moved to Babylon, Jeremiah was left in Jerusalem. And he continued to speak the message of God to people. Now, as you can imagine, the exiles in Babylon were scared, angry, frustrated and homesick. They were in a place they never planned to be under circumstances they didn't want at all. And Jeremiah wrote a letter specifically to them to share what God was saying. And this is what he said. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. And then find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. In other words, God's message to those people was, be for the city. Settle down. Learn to find joy and peace there. Be for the city. It's hard to be for the city if you're constantly looking for a way out of that place. It's hard to see what God is doing in a place if you can't love the place. But, but how do you make that decision? How can you find the strength and love to be for a place you never wanted to be in? Jeremiah gives them their anchor a few verses later. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You can be for the city now because you can trust in my plans for the future. 
Centuries later, Jesus' disciples were worried about being left in the city without Jesus. And he told them, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be also where I am. In other words, I've got the future under control so that you can be for the city now. And these promises are true for you too. He has good plans for your future so you can be present in this place today. You can be for your school now because he has good plans for you. You can be for your office now because he has plans to prosper you. You can be for your neighborhood now because he has good plans for you. You can be for Las Vegas now because he has your hope and your future. Let's pray. God, help us to not have fear. God, help us to learn to love Las Vegas. We want to have eyes to see that we can look around and see what you are already doing. God, we want to join in. We pray, help this place prosper. Help us to live right and bring peace to this place. Help us to know that that we matter and that this place matters. And in the end, God, help us to trust that you have good plans for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, can we sing to him one more time tonight? This is, this is surrender tonight. This is where he wants us tonight. Sing with us. The Lord is my shepherd, and he is everything I need. So I will not worry, I will not fear the enemy. He said that he loves me. He said that he's with me even though I walk through the valley of shadow and death and still come on he has good plans he has good plans for me so I will take heart in deserts and gardens he has good plans he has good plans for me if I know my father I know my father has good plans this is his promise tonight this is his promise tonight come on church lift your voice the Lord is my savior so why should I doubt my victory? Why would I question the rod and the staff that comforts me? He quiets the waters. He quiets the storm inside of me. So what could be better hey! than walking with him?
much for gathering with us tonight and worshiping. We hope you had an amazing time. It was an amazing time standing out there. It's been an amazing time listening to you guys worship. Uh, it's so amazing to come together. Two reminders real quick. We still have two more days of For the City. So if you got the cards or if you're watching on Instagram or if you've got all that, make sure you show up and show out in these next two days to love on Las Vegas. Secondly, if you're an adult, we'll see you back on Sunday for Among the Lions. We are continuing that series. But if you are a student, 6th through 12th grade, sorry adults, check out. Come on, put your earplugs in. Kids, littler kids, cover your ears because you're going to get upset. Maybe you can tell mom and dad, hey, we got to go get something real quick. But 6th through 12th graders, y'all, we got ice cream for you in the venue. <laughs> So, hey, why don't y'all head out there? We love everybody. Sorry we can't give ice cream to everybody, but have a great Wednesday. Thanks for being here, guys. Twice. My receiver was <laughs> <laughs> I was Well, so I just was